of seeing young children in distress, you know, and that's uh, it's always an emotive thing, you know, particularly being a parent yourself. And I think the more, in a way, personalizing something like that, the, the more, uh, the better it is, you know, it taps into your emotions to help, really. But I think sometimes, you know, we hear lots of figures and lots of numbers about the refugees and how many there are, but when you're there and you see them individually and as people, and see their distress firsthand, you know, that's, uh, it's very powerful. And that's what reinforced my belief that, you know, we need to do something. A lot of people watching will know the Greek islands from their holidays. Yeah. They'll know Greece from uh, the situation in the, uh, in the media at the moment about their, their bailout. How are they coping with these numbers of refugees arriving? Yeah, it's almost a perfect storm of events. You know, you have the economic crisis happening in Greece at the moment and the, the political fallout from that. And then you have this crisis, which is the humanitarian crisis. But it's important not to think of this as a Greek crisis. This is a, this is a you know, it's a humanitarian crisis. A European one. And a European crisis that we have to sort of come together to help. But uh, yeah, I think the Greeks themselves that I saw there, like the Coast Guards on this boat, for example, were brilliant, unbelievable. And, and the tourists that I met were fantastic as well. So there's lots of people who are making little groups, volunteer groups themselves, you know, handing out nappies and making sandwiches and stuff like that. But there's only so much they can do. There needs to be a real big organization that can come in there, and, you know, like the UNHCR, and, and help them out. Because the camps that exist there at the moment look, I mean, fairly basic by camp standards. Yeah, they're not, you know, they were camp is odd. I mean, this is like a car park at the side of the road. Yeah. The Greeks have said to the, the refugees, you can use this, and they've supplied some tents there. But, you know, the sanitation at this place, they, they've only been open a while, this uh, particular site was just disgusting. I mean, the smell was disgusting. The people were getting quite angry about it. So, you know, it, it's, it's a situation. There was also a police presence just outside there. So people are starting, tensions are starting to boil over. So they need some organization. Is this a problem that can be solved short of political, global consensus to do something about Syria in particular? I think that's, you know, whether I'm qualified enough to say, uh, to talk about that, I think that is a global political situation. But the fallout from that political situation is a humanitarian one. And I think that, you know, if we see it as a humanitarian crisis, the biggest humanitarian crisis we've had in, in Europe since the Second World War, it really is the great challenge of our age. And we have to step up to it. We have to collectively step up to it. I don't see any reason why we can't separate the economic crisis that is happening in Greece and look at a humanitarian crisis and deal with that. And just to pick up on that point, because of course there are economic migrants coming into Europe as well as people seeking genuine refuge. Did you see any people who are coming there to seek a, a better life and they weren't running away from something? The, mo the majority of the people, in fact, all the people I saw were from Syria and they were, they were um, you know, they had passports. One of the other things that one needs to do is identify these people, not least of all to keep the families together. So, you know, there, there might be other people come along, there might be Afghanis and stuff like that, but the whole situation is about finding out who these people are, identifying them, giving them help when they need genuine help, and the majority of these people need genuine help. You've seen the, uh, the pictures from Syria. We know what's happening there. We know about ISIS. You know, we're being told about that all the time. Mm. These people are fleeing for their lives, particularly with their children, you know. Just finally, David, what about your own sort of personal involvement in this? Obviously, you, you did it with UNHCR, their refugee sort of branch, if you like. Mm -hmm. Did you go to address perhaps some of your own preconceptions? Uh, no, I went to see firsthand. I think it's very important, you know, for me, I've been involved with UNHCR uh, for quite a long time now. And there's nothing like going there. On the, if I'm going to come here and sit with you and talk about it, I need to experience it firsthand. Mm. And I need to be there. I need to be able to report to you, not from pieces of paper, but from my own experience, which you can see I've had. It's very important that uh, there is a genuine, uh, from me, that, you know, I have seen these things myself and be able to report it. And you see, you know, here, this is children who, you know, they're, they're clinging to their parents, they're screaming, these children particularly screaming, but other children were in a catatonic state. They were, the fear that they had of just clinging to their parents and not being able to tap into those emotions, mm -hmm. it's, it's really moving. David Morrissey, many thanks for coming in. Thanks for inviting me.